Hi, my name is Maude Bradley, and I was born and raised on the Sausalito waterfront. So my parents are originally from the Midwest and they met in college and they decided, like a lot of people at the time, to come out to San Francisco and ended up living on Page Street in a collective in the Haight-Ashbury. And they had met um, some people that had discovered this houseboat community in Sausalito and it sounded very interesting. So it was kind of a quintessential San Francisco day, super foggy, socked in fog and they were driving across the Golden Gate Bridge and it was one of those moments where halfway across the bridge they came out and it was just a beautiful sunny day. They came across the bridge and then they came down to this houseboat community and there was this thriving, sprawling, completely wild community going on with all these different houseboats and all these different people that were artists. And architecturally, there were just all these different crafts being formed from, you know, the World War II um, leftover relics, there were warehouse spaces, there were all these things left over post-war. You know, the main guy, Don Arquez, at the time seemed very open for artists and people that were looking for an alternative lifestyle to reside there. There were several paddle wheel ferry boats, which we have one right here, you can see that, you know, are the last existing ones, but they were on their original hulls that had been hauled up onto the shore and people were living on them. And a lot of musicians, you know, the Grateful Dead and Janis Joplin and these types coming through and partying on the Charles Van Dam and playing music. And every time they had parties, they put up posters that said, you know, the party starts at nine until the cops come. So that was just kind of the reputation of the neighborhood. I actually went to high school with Tupac. Um, he was really good friends with some of my good friends. So I believe some of actually bought a houseboat. You know, when he passed away, I, I think his mom inherited and she passed away more recently and I, I believe that they still own it and have family members but there was always something linked to the waterfront which was artists, writers, musicians, boat builders, people crafting and making things with their hands. You know Otis Redding wrote sitting on the dock of the bay right here um, and you can see why, because there to this day is magic to the waterfront and it's just has this energy that's alive and well that, um, you know, I think that people that are artistic gravitate to. Hi, my name's Diane Rossi Andrews, and I work with Angle Volker Global Real Estate in Sausalito, and we have the great pleasure and excitement of selling Shel Silverstein's famous and historic balloon barge. It's historic because in the U.S. Army used it in World War II, and the number is Balloon Boat 1626. This was used in World War I and in World War II, and there were approximately 1,400 of these barges used in London, and about a third of them were there. And what they did was, this is a picture of it, by the way, here, 1626. They were made in Stockton, California, and by Hickingbotham. And they think that uh, this was built around uh, 1943-1944, and uh, it may have been uh, commissioned to the backside of Tiburon as a defense mechanism. They don't think that this barge uh, was used actually in World War II just because it was built toward the end of the war. But balloon barges were very important, and this is a picture. They used them in Normandy and in London, and they would put a cable from the bottom up and fill these balloons with helium to divert um, the enemy planes. And if they hit them, they had cables coming down and the planes would crash and burn. So that's the history here. 
So we'll come in and just where Shel Silverstein wrote his books. Where the Sidewalk Ends, The Giving Tree, and this is actually a picture of Shell here. And we'll get into this a little further, but this was his best friend, Larry Moyer, which I have a picture of in the back, who they both worked for Playboy in Moscow. And they met, and uh, Larry was the photographer, and Shell was the writer and cartoonist, and they had a lifelong friendship. And they were in San Francisco, and they decided one day in the 60s to come over to visit Sausalito. And as soon as they saw the houseboat community, they said to each other, let's buy a boat. And so Shell bought this one, and Larry bought another one, of which I don't know where that is. But uh, Shell said to him, well, when I go, you can stay here as often as you like and as long as you want. Shell did die, and Larry stayed here. He lived until he was 92, and he died in, 19, in um, 2016. So he stayed here. Shell owned it, according to the tax records, from 1985 until 1999. And then the estate had it, and Shell was allowed to live here. And uh, right now, um, Shell's also famous. Uh, he wrote the song, A Boy Named Sue, sung by Johnny Cash. And evidently, he's also featured in the uh, Hall of Fame over in Nashville and in the Smithsonian Institute. So we have a lot of history here. And I think there were quite a few parties during the 70s here. <laughs> but the uh, uh, person who built this structure also built one across the water called the Owl, which is famous too. And that is Chris Roberts. And went up to hoist the balloons because there's like a two or three inch um, section down there. And uh, that's where I tend to think it was. Her book, it shows uh, the bathroom, which was okay. These are original doors. And he had his bed here. And his wife, Diane, had her bed here. And his wife, again, was an artist. And she had her whole studio down below. And. Um, this book, uh, Floating in Sausalito, has wonderful original pictures of this boat. Also quite famous here. And that over there, that's this is the best view. And um, he, he built this one, and he built the owl, and the interior uh, woodwork was done by someone who also worked at the Trident and did all the beautiful uh, woodwork in the Trident, which is a famous restaurant in Sausalito. This is where Shell evidently had his shower, which is now where the washer dryer is. Again, the original windows are all here, the portholes. You can see the heavy doors here, you would close these off to, in case water came in, if you close these off, it would prevent the barge from sinking. That's how they would uh, preserve, preserve the barge. All of this was Larry Moyer's wife's Diane Art Studio. These windows, the two here and the two in the children's room, the current owner found uh, from a salvage shop. Uh, said as she visited this boat, she said, you know, once you live here, it's hard to even think of going back to living any other way. 
in any other place. So uh, you may not think it's for you, but it's for an awful lot of people. The serenity of living by the water is very calming and it's very inspirational. So the houseboat wars um, were basically um, a mixture of things. One of them, you know, a gold mine, uh, the, the location of the neighborhood. And there were all these people that were living, you know, kind of off the grid for free or close to free. These skirmishes on the Sausalito waterfront started before 9 this morning. Workers for the waterfront developer trying their best to extend the new marina pier under construction. Residents of the existing houseboat community doing their best to prevent it. Four houseboats were to be moved to make room for the new pier, but owners of those boats refused to leave. Acting under a court order, Marin Sheriff's deputies hauled away 13 people from inside the first boat. They were held on misdemeanors. But again, it was this beautiful alternative lifestyle and people wanted to get their hands on it and redevelop it and make money off of it. And there was also, you know, the issue, the environmental impact um, where there was all this marshland and they wanted to raise it up in order to build parking lots. And the hippies were up in arms because they were getting evicted and they were concerned about all of the egrets and the blue herons, the gray herons and, you know, the marshes getting destroyed and also them, you know, getting evicted out of these homes that they, most of them had built by hand um, and they didn't really have anywhere else to go. Basically, physically, we're taking people's boats away. And it was pretty brutal. Like, I remember the police came, it was barbaric. They came with fire hoses and were spraying people down. You know, my dad went to go out to the boat and he had an ax and he cut the fire line to stop them from spraying women, children, men, you know, whoever, they just turned the fire hose on and they were spraying people down. So he went to cut the line. They hit him with a billy club. They knocked him into the water. They turned back around to run him over. And luckily he hit his head on the bow of the boat or part of his body. And he, so he sunk down because the propeller would have hit him. They knocked out half of his teeth in the back with a billy club right in the face. And everybody that went to court over this stuff lost at the time. I think it was years and years later that people actually fought the case again and went back he needed to get all his teeth replaced um, and it was violent I mean it was devastating and traumatic to have your home that you've crafted yourself and you possibly had your children on or whatnot to physically be hauled away and destroyed um, and so it was it was pretty brutal and pretty violent and somehow I don't historically know really what what happened or what stopped it. I know that in Gate 3, where I grew up, they actually leveled the building that I used to live in. And then I think what happened is they know I'm here because I hung in here and like rode the way for this project. I'm actually in low income housing, like with these like multi-million dollar boats that are all around me. Um, because years ago there was someone who saw the beauty in the original artistic, you know, development of this neighborhood and um, donated a large amount of money in order to try to preserve that, which is what allowed our project to go through. And a lot of people, um, were able to uh, remodel their boats and bring them up to code, um, but yet have a low-income housing uh, development in Sausalito, which didn't exist prior to that. 